Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series, messages from the heart of God to encourage you and to help you in your times of need, to give you mercy for your failure, and to let you know that you can come to God's throne of grace with just a thought, just by saying, help, Lord, and reaching out and walking right directly into the presence of your Father, God. Today, we're talking about how to conquer loneliness and the fears and the worries that the world presses you down about. God doesn't want you worrying about anything. He wants you to depend on him for everything. God has an antidote for loneliness and worries and concern. And because he is the Lord God, his antidote is complete, is fully developed, and it works in every situation and circumstance. When God is speaking to you, you need to listen. And his word is his voice to you, spoken through his messengers and his prophets, written and recorded by his messengers and prophets, and spoken to you even this day in hearing what God has to say to you. The Lord himself says to you, I take hold of your right hand. Do not fear. I am here to help you. That's God speaking to you out of Isaiah 41. He's telling you, I am here right now. As you're listening to the sound of my voice, God is speaking to you and telling you he is here for you. He is your helper and he will help you. God is speaking directly to you saying, fear not. There's nothing to fear or to worry or to be anxious about for I'm with you. Don't look around at the outward circumstances and begin to fear and have worry and be dismayed. Remember, I'm your God. I know how to do all things to help you in all ways, and I'm not limited by anything. I am your strength, and I'm the one who helps you. Yes, I hold you when you're walking through the difficulties of life, and I carry you. When your burdens are too heavy, I'm the one who helps you in all the affairs of life. And I hold you up with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Listen, there's many of us that have been hurt by people over the years. And you have to forgive those people. You have to recognize that the enemy is working on them and trying to get them to act out of character for what God made them to be and who he makes them to be. And you have to realize that we have an enemy, a supernatural enemy that's using supernatural forces against you to get you to act out of character and act in ways which God did not ever plan for you to act. But God has a way of escape because once you fall toward the enemy's direction, he brings condemnation. He wants you to be isolated. He wants you to feel lonely. He wants you to feel separated from God and think that God condemns you and doesn't want anything to do with you because you have broken some law or broken and done some sin that he's more than happy as the accuser of the brethren to point out to you. But I'm here to tell you, as a born again child of the living God, there is no condemnation to you who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Jesus himself has taken the keys away from the devil. And he now holds the keys of Hades and death. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And he actually says it this way. Behold, those who are enraged and inflamed against you have been put to shame, and those in the flesh will be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you shall be as nothing, and they shall perish. You shall seek for them who contend with you, but you'll not find them. You'll war and look for those who war against you, but you'll find they're not there. They're nothing as a non existent thing. The reason. It's because the Lord, your God, is your good shepherd. And he goes before you and he helps you in all the affairs of life. 
God has been working sometimes for years and years on the situation that you're going to come across this week or next year or situations you can look at and say, gosh, I see how God arranged all these things in order for it to happen just the way it's supposed to happen on the timing it's supposed to happen and doing it in such a way that he gets the glory. God is always for you. God is helping you. So what he wants you to do is know that you can touch him and that when you touch him, he responds. How do you touch him, you ask? You touch God every time you have a feeling of concern and worry, a feeling of thanksgiving and praise because you as a born-again child of the living God, your body is the temple of the living God and the Holy Spirit lives in you. Jesus himself is now your life. The life that you live in the flesh, you live by faith. God's divine persuasion of his Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you in the ways in which you should go. God himself is helping you. So the easiest way to grasp God is helping you is that when he says that he's holding you by his righteous right hand, then you just need to stick up your left hand up into the air and just grab hold of his right hand as an act of symbolic faith, just grasping it and telling him, Lord, I love you. I thank you that you're with me and that you're holding me and you're helping me in all the affairs of life. I thank you there's nothing for me to worry about. That when I start to feel lonely or afraid or worry, all I have to do to reconnect with you is just to raise up my hand, to raise up my heart, to raise up my voice to you, God, my Father. So tell the Lord Jesus Christ how you're feeling and the struggles that you're facing. He already knows them, by the way. But it does a good for you to talk about them. Because when you talk about them, it requires you to spend time in his presence. And when you're spending time in his presence, you're basking in the safety and the light and the knowledge and the understanding of God, whose grace and mercy surrounds you and his tender love envelops you. And in his presence, you find a tranquil peace that surpasses all understanding. It gives you a break from the world and the things of the world, a break from worries and fears and carrying burdens that you weren't meant to carry. God never leaves you. As a matter of fact, he's the one that's drawing you to himself through Jesus Christ. When you have these heavy burdens, he's the one who's your comforter and your helper. And he's wanting to help you right now. You need to take those things that he's bringing across your mind. Those things that you have concerns about and worries about this upcoming week. And those things that you may have worries and concerns last week about. I was speaking to a friend of mine. And they were telling me about how their cousin had received the blessing of God throughout the week. How she didn't know how the things could work out that the way they were working out, but they did. How God was moving in the situations and circumstances in the, just a daily, day-to-day life. But as I was speaking to my friend, they told me how they had asked God to show them what they should do. And they had told their cousin to sit there and be watching what God's going to do. And in the end of the week, the mercy and the goodness and the grace of God and the favor of God was shown. And they had victory in their week. Even though they may have had late hours, they had a great God that did great things for them and showed himself faithful for them. Because they trusted in him and they loved him. And they were able to see what he was doing all around them. And God is doing things around you just as he did for them. Even last week for me, I had many things that were concerning of me, many things that were very difficult and tough, things that needed to be handled, and I didn't know how they were going to end up or how they were going to get done. But I left them with God, and he gave me a peace that surpassed it all understanding. In the times I didn't want to be at peace, he still comforted me. When I felt a little uneasy, He 
gave me thoughts to seek him, to look to him, and to not think on the thing that I was concerned about. And by not thinking on the thing I'm concerned about, then I focused more on what I was supposed to focus on and focusing on him. And by doing so, he took care of every situation and circumstance, and he gave me the victory throughout the week simply by trusting him as his son, not for any other reason, not because I'm deserving, not because it's due to me, just simply because I'm a child of the living God. And because you're a child of a living God, he'll do it for you too. Because he's no respecter of persons. Listen, God is watching over you continually. He invested his own son's life for your life. And because he considers you of such high value, you can be most assured that he's always watching over you, his child. He tells you in Genesis twenty-eight, fifteen. Just as he told our ancestors, behold, I am with you and I am keeping watch over you with care. I'm taking notice of you and wherever you may go, I will bring you to the place that you're supposed to go because I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one who leads you and guides you in the way in which you should go. I'm the one who clears the rocks out of the trail. I'm the one who keeps the wolves and the, and the serpents and the scorpions and the evil away from you. I'm the one who, when you stray off the path, I come and I take my rod and my staff and I beat off the uglies and the demons and the uh, spirits that are coming against you. And I do it with just a word and I take my staff and I pull you out from the edge that you're hanging on and bring you back into the fold and then I clean you up and I dress you up and I make no mention of your falling away because I recognize that you were drawn away by an evil spirit that you were drawn away by the evil of somebody else and I saw it all but you're in my shepherd you're my, I'm your shepherd, and you're in my pasture, and you're my sheep, and I take care of you. That's what the living God says to you. He loves you and wants the absolute best for you. It's not based on your performance. It's based on his great love for you that he had even before you were ever born. God made a conscious decision that those who are created in his image and his likeness, that he created for himself called mankind, that he would do something in eternity past, knowing that in the future, man would be tempted to fall. And in that fall, God would reconcile all things back to himself through his own son, coming a man in the flesh, giving his own life and spilling his own blood and shedding it for you to redeem you back to God and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and to reconcile you back to God giving you peace with God and right standing with God so that you always know that God does not condemn you. As a matter of fact, he lifts you up. He loves you and he wants the absolute best for you. So God continues and he says, I will be with you and I will favor you with blessing upon blessing. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, for you belong to Christ now. And you're in him who is Abraham's seed. And you are Abraham's offspring and the spiritual heir according to God's oath and promise. Galatians three, twenty nine. Yes, the Lord blesses you and he watches over you and he guards you and he keeps you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and enlighten you and to be gracious to you. He shows you his kind mercy. And he shows you his grace and his favor. The Lord lifts you up with his approving countenance upon you. And then he gives you a peaceful, tranquil heart and life continually. He guards your heart and mind when you reach up to him and you grasp his hand. For the Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The Lord keeps you from all harm. He watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and as you go, both now and forever. 
He never leaves you nor forsakes you. Just as God said to you, his child, I will not in any way fail you. I will not give you up. I will not leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Joshua 1 5. So you can take comfort and be encouraged and confidently and boldly say, The Lord is your helper because you're a child of the living God. God himself is for you. Who can be against you? God himself fights the battles for you. And he has prepared the way. And he has prepared for all your help and all your provisions and all your safety that you need on a moment-by-moment, day-by-day basis. Why does he do that? Because God so loved you. He sent his own son. And so that by just understanding the very simple salvation message that if God was willing to send his son to save you, he is more than willing to, to sit there and do everything else for you. God loves you. You're his child. And you need to remember you're his child. And as a child of God, he takes care of you as the best daddy and mama could possibly think to take care of their child that had unlimited resources. That's your father. And he loves you. And he'll do that for you. As a matter of fact, he's working around you all the time. And we miss him because we're deflected by the fiery darts of looking toward God's direction, seeing what God's doing, because we're focused more on the things of the world than we are the things of God. So it's my prayer, Father God, that we would focus on you, and that we would release any problems to you that we may have, and we would know that you'll watch over us and do a great work in our lives, and we know that our faith is in the power and the wisdom of God exhibited by the Spirit of God, shown forth to bring you glory and to cause us to seek you and want you to help us in every situation. I remember, Father God, that you tell us that you're faithful and that you love us. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every thought in my life. And I pray that these who are listening, take, that you take authority over their loss, life's thoughts and that I plead the blood of Jesus over their thoughts, their emotions, and their wills, that they would be able to clearly, fully understand you, that they don't hear the voice of man, they don't hear a messenger's voice, they hear the voice of God, what God, you're trying to say to them, not what a man's saying, but what you're saying. So I pray that they walk in the Spirit, and that they live in the Spirit, even though they're walking in the world and living in the flesh. I thank you, Father God, that the weapons of their warfare are not physical, but weapons that are mighty before God for the overthrowing and destruction of strongholds and every thought that comes against them. Those thoughts of worry, those thoughts of concerns, those thoughts of loneliness, those thoughts of anxiousness. I cast them down in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that greater is you who's in us And that you give us the power and desire both to refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thought that the enemy may set against us to make us feel condemned, shamed, useless, worthless, and lonely. That you, Father God, take us and make us your glory, your new creation, your masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. And show us how you view us in your wonderful love mercy, kindness, grace, and favor. I thank you, Father God, that you're always watching over us and guiding us and helping us. And I thank you that for these who are listening, that you, Father God, would help them, that you would keep their minds from wandering out of the presence, out of your presence, that you would lead their thoughts and the purposes of their life to follow you, and that their life would glorify you, Father, both in their spirit, soul, and bodies, and that they would take no account of the evil around them, but that they would look for the good of God doing works around them, that they would search for you and find you, that they would see you and know you, 
and that you, Father God, would hold them up with your righteous right hand, and that they would know you and the power of your might, and that they, Father God, gird up their loins of their mind, and they just set their mind on things above and not on the things of the earth, the higher things, the things where you are at, and that whatever's true, whatever's worthy of reference, whatever's honorable and seemly, whatever's just and whatever's pure, whatever's lovely and of a good report, whatever is kind and gracious, whatever has virtue and is excellence, whatever is positive in these attributes that you have in situations and circumstances, may they focus on those. Anything that's praiseworthy, they think on it. And they take no account of the evil. And they take no account of the wrong and the parable things that happen around us, Father God, in the news, but they fix their mind on Christ himself. And because they fix their mind on Christ, they also have been given the mind of Christ, so they hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. So in the name of Jesus, I ask, Father God, that you allow them to be filled with your spirit and to give them the strength and the power to exercise your authority in their lives, and that you, Holy Spirit, would garnish up and fulfill your purpose and plans and pursuits in their lives so that they know that God is for them. He is with them. You're comforting them and you're helping them, and that the peace of God that passes all understanding guards their heart and mind so that they know that their God supplies all their needs and nothing is impossible to them because they're a child of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. And remember, God loves you, I love you, and Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Trust God, obey God, and leave all the consequences to Him, and He will show Himself faithful on your behalf his dear child. Good evening.